वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर वी एस एस जी कॉलेज कानपुर दिस मॉड्यूल फॉर थर्ड पेपर नाइनटीन्थ सेंचुरी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर इज रिगार्डिंग कीट्स लेटर्स एंड इट हैज बीन रिटन बाय डॉक्टर बीना अग्रवाल जॉन कीट्स अ नेम that exemplifies the romantic poetry it is a synonym of romanticism a person who died just at the age of 25 a person who had suffered domestic problems a person who could not get his love due to certain reasons he gave this word such a beautiful and important literature in the form of his poems as well as his letters very few people know about the importance of john keats's letters we know him as a poet we know him his concept of poetry sensuousness hellenism and various other remarkable things but as far as his letters are concerned they are treasure for poetry john keats he was born in 1795 in london in the family of an ostler his father died when he was just 9 year old and consequently at the age of 15 he was apprenticed to a surgeon for him to join medical profession was a method to compromise with adverse conditions and was a matter of his choice but things changed the moment from cowden clark he got a copy of spencer's fairy queen and after reading that he got inspiration it inspired his sensitive genius to realize the sensuous charm of poetic creed in his medical profession he used to contemplate of a word of beauty and fantasy that was not the word for him he realized that the satisfaction he gets in the word of poetry is not comparable to any other word after getting a copy of chapman's translation of homer keats got an exposure to greek art and beauty homer's iliad revealed to him a different kind of beautiful word his concept of beauty changed in 1816 Keats came in contact with Lee Hunt who again significantly influenced him to modify his sensibility and this poet poet by heart John Keats he became one of the younger romantics who changed the definition of poetry itself he revolted against the neo classical ideals of poetry He wrote poems not for elite or a different class he wrote poems for all so that was the romantic revolt initiated by him along with shelley and byron now when we call keats as a romantic poet let us reconsider the chief characteristics of romanticism quest for liberty prominence of emotions and imagination simplicity humanism celebration of the spectacle of nature along with medievalism and hellenism escape to the world of beauty and idealism flexibility and experiment in new poetic forms all these things they were there in the poetry of keats so truly we can call him a romantic poet 
Keats is designated as a pure poet because his poetry is free from the burden of preaching and spiritual messages. He was a poet first. He believes that poet must represent the experiences that are close to his natural sensibility. And so, this spontaneity and intensity comes in natural form. It brings joy. Joy, this takes birth out of the realization of beauty. He admits and propagated like anything, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. And it became a maxim, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Just one line is sufficient to prove his metal as a poet. For Keats, with a poet, the idea of beauty overcomes all other considerations. It is therefore, he prefers the authenticity of sensation instead of speculations. One word that is closely connected with him, that is Hellenism. Greek's Hellenism consists in his love for beauty, pagan delight in nature, attraction for Greek writings and sculptures, the use of concrete imagery and clarity of expression. Today in this module, we are not discussing Keats's poems. We are concerned with the letters of Keats. By writing these letters, Keats gave the word a definition of poetry. Keats expressed in these letters his point of view related with art and poetry. Through these letters, he has also commented upon various authors, the contemporary poets like Wordsworth, Shelley and others. They are very, very important because his ideas, his thought process and what he wanted from this poetic word is penned down beautifully in those letters. Keats was of the view that poetry must be unobtrusive. It should be free from the burden of didacticism. It should be spontaneous and natural. Authenticity of human experiences must be there. Predominance of sensual pleasure makes poetry a real worth. On the concept of fine art, Keats wanted to draw our attention towards certain points. They are fine excess of poetry, negative capability, free from the burden of intricacy of a spiritual message, realization of beauty through senses, intense passion, with a great poet, sense of beauty overcomes all other consideration. Beauty and joy, they go simultaneously. Blending of classical art with sensibility that is romantic in nature. Now, in the essay titled Authenticity of Imagination, this letter was addressed to Benjamin Bailey on November 27, 1877. At the outset of the letter, Keats reflects on his relationship with Hayden and concludes that in spite of the understanding at mental levels, there is a lack of the understanding of emotions and motives. This breach leads to all confusions and conflicts, he said. I quote, two minds meet and do not understand each other time enough to prevent any shock or surprise at the conduct of either party." Unquote. In this spirit, Keats dwells on exposing the distinction of genius and heart. It implies the distinction of sensitivity and intellect. Keats admits that man can develop humility and capability of submission with the feelings felt at heart. Keats recommends that the end of all problems is the authenticity of imagination. Imagination 
is an expression of the real self of an individual beyond the rational control of intellect. We already know that Coleridge wrote much about imagination, about types of imagination. The passions are true to human self according to Keats and they can lead to the realization and creation of essential beauty. Keats was a worshipper of beauty and that he expressed in this particular letter. Another letter, Wordsworth's poetry, he wrote and this letter entitled Wordsworth Poetry, it was addressed to Reynolds and it appeared on February 3rd, 1818. Keats inherited romantic temper and attained the excellence like that of Shakespeare. Still in his letters and observations, he pays rich tribute to William Wordsworth. Here, he expresses his positive view. For the cause of simplicity, that was the basis of Wordsworth's poetic theory and convention. He admits, I quote, simplicity is the only thing, unquote. Two other points that he paid his attention toward, they are over speculative notions spoil the grace of expression and modern poets search for exceptional is absurd. He preferred direct, simple and straightforward expressions and that in theory and practice as well. In a letter titled Axioms of Poetry, this extract is a part of letter of Keats addressed to John Taylor, which was written on February 27th, 1818. In this letter, Keats expresses his resentment at the prejudiced criticism of the critics on his creative verses. Taylor advised him to make alteration of punctuation marks in his monumental work Endymion. He points out that hypercriticism is not of much harm as compared to the prejudiced observation on a work of art. Now Keats's comment in this letter are of very importance and how he discusses his reaction to his critics is noteworthy. He says that it does a great harm to the poetic sensibility and the endeavors of a creative artist. The prejudiced observations hurt an individual in an unconscious manner. He makes his confession that in Endymion, he has his own grounds of justification, that no logical proof or justification was required. In his observation, he emphasizes two facts, that poetry is not an expression of individual talent only. And he said that it condemns arrogance in expression. It negates imitation and maintains individual identity. Individuality, naturalness, self-respect, sublimity of thought, effectiveness of expression should be taken care of. In the letter Chambers on Human Life, this letter of Keats that has been referred as Chamber of Human Life is addressed to John Hamilton Reynolds and it was written on May 3rd, 1818. Keats begins this letter with a confession that a sensible poem or letter can't be composed in a state of disgusted feeling. Within quotes, disgusted feeling. The state of gloom essentially affects nature, a structure and effect of the work of art. In this, he also admitted that just like a poem is a work of art, in the same way, writing a letter is also a work of art. And it is equally important. Poet denies it perhaps because the end of art is pleasure and delight, not gloom or despair. So it should be written in a state when you feel that pleasure, when you feel that delight. But when you are in despair, then you cannot express that happiness. The letter entitled Poet Has No Identity, addressed to Richard Woodhouse, was written on October 27th, 1818. In this letter, Keats makes his personal observation on the identity and the sensibility of a poet. 
This is not a personal letter in this way. Rather, you can call it a message to all the poets. The in-depth analysis of thoughts contained in the letter give contradictory suggestions. In the beginning of letter, Keats conveys his thanks to his friend for the warmth of sentiments that he conveys in these letters. Here Keats ventures to expose two principles of poetry. At the first place, he talks of the nature of poetical character and in the second place, he reveals his views of life as he is supposed to follow. The discussion suggests Keats' concept of negative capability. That is a term widely used for Keats. A poet, even in absence, any specified identity retains his capacity to identify himself with different characters and situations. However, he expresses his desire to forget himself in the world of art and beauty. This is what he has written in this letter and this is what he has written in Ode to a Nightingale. The difference is not much. Here he is telling it to the world in the plainest possible form. And there in Ode to Nightingale, he is expressing it in a beautiful form of poetry. The confessions made in this letter justifies that the Keats is not an escapist as various critics have labelled him after going through Ode to Nightingale. For him, the greatness of poetry consists of its celebration of the dignity of humanity. He expresses his desire that he must retain his interest in humanity. He said, I quote, all I hope is that I may not lose all interest in human affair." Unquote. The poet who died at the age of 25, he considered that his interest for humanity will spoil the grace of his vision. Keats further admits that the pleasure of life lies in feelings born out of the realization of beauty. He intends to write his poems with the love for humanity and the delight in beautiful. He said, I should write from the mere yearning and fondness I have for the beautiful. For him, beauty is not a concept of individual interest only, but an uncompromising faith in human dignity. He has rightly been termed as a worshipper of beauty. Keats' idea of poet's identity is often discussed with the poets. In this, he said that poet retains negative capability. He talks about objectivity, equilibrium and consistency. Absence of identity decodes the comprehensiveness of poet's personality. Realization of the suffering of humanity is also there. Poet's capacity to respond to beauty and art is impressive. His interest in humanity, his comprehensiveness of poet's identity inspires others. The letter entitled Veil of Soul Making addressed to George and Georgian Keats subtitled as Veil of Soul Making. It appeared on 14th Feb and 13th May 1819. It is a letter with complex philosophical notions in which Keats focuses on the issue of conditions of life instead of exploring the poetic theory that he did in his previous letters. It is motivated by an incident in which he got black eye hit by a cricket ball. Keats with this problem come in a state of withdrawal. He feels dull. He is not motivated by external agencies. And in the same letter, he has talked about certain other objects like futility of love, pleasure and exercise. To him, pleasures are the illusionary expressions of sorrow and pain. Interest in mind, when it is absent, it leads to certain negative things. Subjective perception of events is also there. Similarities in the instinctive behavior of man and animal, eagerness of survival, sensibility for improvement, 
all these important topics were discussed. The concept of idea, like great thoughts, dispels illusions and ignorance. Poetry is the celebration of idea, whenever you get an idea and write that poetry on that particular idea, it is the way that you celebrate that idea. One should not be conscious about imperfections because imperfections are the part of human life. He talks about truthfulness of sensation. He talks that soul is different from abstract intellect. Soul formation takes place in painful situations. Rather, he realized that soul formation or realization of this soul formation takes place in painful situations. Painful situations are like mind's Bible. You are nearer to God when you are in pain. Formation of soul is beyond the limitations of logic. You can feel it, but you cannot prove it. Real identity of man is formed by circumstances. To define the concept of Keats, just one sentence by him is sufficient. This worshipper of beauty said, Beauty is truth, truth beauty. That is all ye know on earth and all ye need to know. And a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Whatever he wrote, the beautiful poem, the beautiful letters, they are indeed joy forever. His writings are treasure for the poetic word. He is a poet, not of an age, but for ages. This 19th century younger romantic is an inspiration for many and many more poets to come. Thank you. Thank you for visiting EPG Patshala.